going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome. I am the Crypto Crow. You may notice my voice is a little off after this uh, <clears throat> crazy weekend in Fort Lauderdale. Went to the, uh, it was a kind of a private uh, invite only karate combat event at the president's house, the president of karate combat. It was his mother's mansion. It was absolutely beautiful. Uh, and I, man, I can't tell you how many people were at this thing, but uh, I'm guessing there were at least 2,000 folks at this thing. I mean, it was nuts. And there are a lot of uh, different influencers and, and celebrity guests and things. I ran into, I literally ran into the Island Boys, which was funny. Though I scared the shit out of one of them. Um, and, and he, he basically turned and he's like, oh my God, you're huge. And he freaked out. And I looked at him and I'm thinking, you're tiny. Those dudes are absolutely tiny. Um, like, 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 I, I, I'm not sure if they were even bigger than my wife, who's five foot and a hundred pounds. I mean, they, these guys were really, really tiny, covered head to toe in tattoos and jewelry and stuff. I mean, um, but they, I mean, they seemed cool, man. I mean, they were just chill and having fun. Uh, Rick Ross was there. I met and talked to, uh, Bradley Martin, who, um, you know, I just walked up to him because I, I I took some pictures, uh, and uh, you know I, I basically talked to him about like when are you going to fight a karate combat? I'm your weight class, like I I'd be available. You know, um, you know I see him talk all the time up, up to to different fighters, and um, you know he definitely seems to be under the misconception that because he's 265 and he is every bit of 265, I mean, he's a huge dude and in ridiculous shape. I'm not knocking the guy. The guy definitely trains. He works out. He looked phenomenal. Um, better better in person than I've seen in his YouTube videos. I mean, he was a, a brick shit ass. I mean, the guy was massive, but he thought I was huge. And I thought that was funny. Cause I looked down at him and I'm, I'm like, yeah, I'm a lot taller, but I mean, his arms, every part of him was just ginormous. It was, it was impressive. Um, but you know, he definitely seems to think that because of his size, that he would, he would be able to take guys like Nate Diaz and, you know, pro boxers and things. And, um, he's always slightly, he's always trying to work on that angle of trying to get someone to admit that he might have a chance. It's like his end all be all goal. But I thought, you know what, realistically, like I, I'm in his weight class and I'm just a 46 year old dude. I'm sure he's in way better shape. I mean, it would probably be a, a massacre. I'd probably, uh, you know, I mean, he would probably just take me to task in every conceivable way. <laughs> uh, but you know, I mean, jokes aside, I, I'd be willing. I, I'd be willing. I'd be willing to train for that. Um, I know he's insanely strong and 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 all of that. But you know, to be fair about it too, I mean, stand up is my game. You know what I mean? I've never been much of a wrestler or a jujitsu guy, and a lot of it was always defensive anyway. Um, so I prefer to be on my feet. I prefer to be able to kick. I prefer to be able to do those things, which I know he doesn't have a background in. So karate combat may not be his his bag without being able to wrestle. Um, but, you know, it, it, he was actually a really nice guy. I mean, he was. He was cool, and he was very humble. He was a lot more humble than I expected him to be. I thought he was going to be. I was curious how he was off camera. <clears throat> And, um, you know, he was very nice and very humble and, and he, he wasn't cocky or anything. He very much seemed kind of like, this is amazing. It was like, he had never seen anything like it before. Uh, but he was really cool. Uh, there were a lot of different people there, man. I, I, I don't even know, um, who a lot of the people were that I met. I had people coming up to me all over just like, Hey, how are you? Like they knew me and I, I didn't know who they were, but I, they would have people following them and they would have people shooting everything they did. And like, I didn't know who any of these people were. So maybe you'll see me pop up in different places i don't know um so uh yeah i mean it was a really good time and um you know there's a lot happening with karate combat if you don't know you're gonna know because i'm gonna show you um bit boy is uh effectively a uh, locked down his opponent i think there were some issues with um his his previous opponent patty uh and i don't know what's supposed to be public or not but i know he had some health concerns um and 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 we'll just leave it at that i'm not quite sure what's uh public knowledge or not and i don't want to uh, expose anybody's situation and i i will say it wasn't like he failed like an std test or a, a blood test or anything like that it wasn't anything like that i'll, I'll tell you that but he had uh, like some pre-existing conditions i guess that he's been dealing with for a really long time and he thought he was past it um and and i guess it's you know it's just it's not it wasn't working for him in his training and things and so i guess ben is now fighting a guy named more light 
Um, for those of you familiar, let me know in the comments who this guy is. I don't know anything about him at all. Um, but um, this is Ben's new opponent. And and you know what? I will say Ben's been looking really good. And, you know, he hasn't said anything to me in a while. Um, you know, there, there, I, I, I never really seem to know what's going on with Ben now these days. I, I, I you hear a lot of stories and things, and and I, I talked to Ben for a solid hour, hour and a half. I talked to him and Cassie at one point, um, where he explained so many things. And you know, I, I know a lot of people are like, you know, he's losing his mind, and he's super caught up in the hype, and he's like, you know, just all of these different things. And I think there's elements of truth to a lot of that, um, elements of truth to a lot of that. But I also believe that based off of what he told me, um, you know, privately. You know, I think he's got a lot of reason to be a little paranoid. Let's put it that way. But um, I think I think his paranoia definitely seems to stretch a little beyond uh, reality in some cases. But you know, they always say, you know, uh, are you really paranoid if they're actually out to get you? You know what I mean? I mean, he's created a lot of big, powerful enemies in the space all over. Um, you know, with a lot of his exposés and a lot of his work, whether it's FTX or money laundering groups or like whatever, um, I feel like he genuinely feels like it's his role as a part of what he does for the public to show that he's on the other side of what a lot of people try to stress about him. They try to say, oh, he's a scammer and he's a this and he's a that. And it's like, I don't know that Ben's ever been that kind of guy. Like, I really don't. I don't. I mean, we. I've known Ben since he was doing little videos uh to like 3000 people at best you know with these animated video clips and things and he used to be just a very humble sweet fun natured guy and and definitely his expansion on 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 TikTok and then the t YouTube um and and everything he got caught up in uh you know I, I would almost consider it like he was tra chasing a dragon in a lot of sense and I think that that did affect him quite a bit um but I've seen his more recent content since he's you know kind of put uh, the hit squad and such behind him and um he, he seems like he's getting a little bit more to his roots maybe 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 because he doesn't have a million people watching him on the new channel um he still gets really good views and his channel's growing really fast but um i, I just i genuinely i just want to see ben do well and i want him to maintain his humility i mean that's the biggest thing and it doesn't matter how popular we get it doesn't matter what we accomplish in the crypto space we're still just crypto nerds with a video channel like we're let's be real you know, and, and it's like, I see a lot of guys that, you know, they, they start getting some elements of fame and it, it seems to go to their head and then the money flows and, and they think they're on another planet. And it's like, I, you know, it doesn't matter what I, you guys don't know what I have. You don't know shit about what I've accomplished. You know, you know, you know about like my fun projects and things, but you know, I don't boast and brag about anything. I just try to keep it real because in the, in the grand scheme of things, we're still all in this together. And, and it's like, and I know that there are some others that are very much like that. Um, but you know, a lot of people root against Ben. I'm not, I don't root against Ben. I, I really want to see him do well. And I do believe that his heart is genuinely, genuinely in the right place. Has he made some big mistakes? Yes. He's made some significant whammies, especially, you know, in my opinion, like the holiday cards and stuff on Twitter and like uh, all of that. I'm like, mm, that's so cringe, man. Like, and, and I told him, I told him directly and he's accepted my criticism. Um, you know, he didn't lunge at me. Like, how dare you talk to me that way? And he's like, listen, I get it. I appreciate your, your opinion you know he's very respectful with me and I will always be that way with him and you know sometimes we joke I'll, I'll, I'll you know how I am I joke with everybody about everything and I think sometimes he doesn't know how to take me he doesn't know if my joke is like taking a stab at him for real or if I'm just poking fun to make fun conversation I think sometimes he gets a little confused because he's so used to people just coming for his throat I'm never I'm never doing that uh, he should know that deep down I'm never doing that I, I pick on everybody I call my wife my midget for God's sakes. Like everybody knows my wife is my midget. You know, I just, it's just how I roll. So I don't know. I'm excited for the fight though. Ben Armstrong versus uh, more light. Um, I'm excited to see it. That's going to be the main event. Um, I'm pretty sure that uh, Moon Daddy and I are going to be the co-main event, if I'm not mistaken. So we're going to be uh, the fight right before Ben and more. And so it, it's definitely going to be an exciting night. And listen, there are some guys on here with some real skill, like Dreamer. Um, you know, Dreamer's got some real talent, man. Like he's not just some like some web nerd. Like the, some of the fights on this card, I was definitely excited about Crypto Keeper, but he had to come out because some asshole at his gym decided to go heavy 
and hard uh, without without crypto or keeper realizing it and um, decided to like spin back kick his ass into the ribs and broke a real rib like actually fractured his ribs so that sucks like i i might like be waiting for that guy in the parking lot with like a blunt object uh personally but um you know to each their own so anyway um there's that and then this was the event that we went to and i've got some i've got some news and then we're gonna have some other things uh but this was the event uh this is karate.com and they haven't announced they haven't officially announced the february 23rd influencer fight club event yet i know it's coming soon and i know they were waiting to get um the uh the the, the venue and things locked down it's apparently it's definitely it's confirmed it's going to be in mexico city um and so it's going to be a big deal and if you don't have the karate.com app and you're not getting some karate tokens to place your bets and they're up only uh festivities i highly encourage you to do that now on to some other news this is my soblox post <clears throat> for those that you don't know I, I i've been building soblox with my developer for a while now and i just I, i'm like i need help i need help to build this and we set up everything on the um on the project catalyst and i was going to vote with all my ada and i got a new phone i upgraded my phone and it didn't even dawn on me like the, I didn't know how that, so when I got my new phone, I had to go back in to the app because I went to go vote on my project, you know? And um, I couldn't because the apps said, connect your wallet. I go to connect my wallet. I try to get my pin and everything. And it basically said, you'll be approved by, by the time voting starts. And I was like, oh my God, I'm not gonna be able to vote on this project. We've done all this stuff to try and get ready for Project Catalyst. Um, like it's an actual working, it's go to it, go to soblocks.com. It's a social media platform, it works. It's just not on chain yet. And there are still so many major elements that we wanna bring to it, but it just costs a lot and it takes a lot of time and we needed some help. So I was hoping that Project Catalyst would be able to help with that. But now I can't even vote on my own project because I'm not gonna get my new phone, uh, my new phone and wallet approved until the next, project catalyst and i'm like i am dying and it's like I, I was really disappointed so chances are it's not going to go through and i'm going to have to I, who knows i might have to wait until 2025 to bring so blocks to where uh i plan for it to be but it is what it is uh looking at bitcoin we've been getting a little bit of an uptick uh we're currently trading at forty three thousand. i did set uh, conditional limit order at around 41,769. And that was before it started to pump up. And <clears throat> this is a, this is a daily candle here. Let's go to an hourly. Um, we got a buy trigger, uh, on this other, uh, this is the, um, this is the, uh, oh my gosh, super trend. Now, what I'm also going to show you is that there's some big news uh, happening right now with Crow Trader. Um, this is my bot. 1.5.0 is now available, and it's available on Mac and PC <clears throat> and Linux. So if you're a Linux user, you can use it on Linux. Um, I didn't even know that this was a thing, to be honest with you, because I have a whole Linux box I would have rather run this on. I'm running it on a Mac instead. But if you don't know, um, this thing, so my dev gave me updates on the bot uh, yesterday on what's coming, and, and I, we're still, I'm still working on fixing the header and things. Um, there's a lot of stuff coming to this website. I'm just trying to get it finalized first. Um, but, so, um, the goal for what's coming in 1.5.1, which may very well be dropping tonight, may, be, may even happen by the time you see this video, Signals Live Trading will be out. So no longer are you just going to be limited to paper trading with AI generated signals on TradingView. If you if you pro if you if you use ChatGPT to create. Um, you know, trading signals and things uh, like I, I, I was experimenting with here and kind of showing you, you write me a pine five pine five strategy for a 13 over 34 EMA for trading view. Boom. And it wrote it out. You copy that. You throw it into the plot. I just did a video recently showing all of the how to's, how to set up the bot, how to do all that. Check it out if you're interested. Um, but it's been reduced to just paper trading. So people can trade, test, test uh, strategies and things. Well, 1.5.1 is going to be live trading. So you're going to be able to live trade those strategies. And I've got a thousand eight on the line that I'm basically throwing up as a contest over the next couple weeks weeks i think it's still february 10th where i want people to create strategies run them in paper trading 
um, and then show me their gains. The, the strategies with the best gains between now and February 10th, whatever that strategy is, is gonna get a thousand ADA out of my own wallet. Uh, exchanges. Beta exchanges, all of these will have back testing, paper trading, and signals paper trading. No live trading enabled uh, just yet. KuCoin, Bybit, BitGet, Kraken, and Fairdesk. All these new exchanges are coming to Crow Trader for everybody. Um, we're working things out so that Fairdesk, uh, because I, I like using my Fairdesk for my leverage trading. It's a, their sponsor of mine, and Fairdesk is is ready. They're going to offer some really cool promotions for Crow Trader users on the the, the new spot exchange. So that's going to be badass. Um, and so yeah, that's coming. FYI, one point five point one should drop tonight with live signals training the beta exchanges and the Mac script to double click run that way. Cause installing on a Mac right now is a little tricky. So bookmark that I'm telling you, there's going to be a lot of content coming uh, for crow trader. I want to help everybody try and make some money with this. I think that's it for the general news right now. Charles Hoskinson predicts unprecedented growth for the Cardano ecosystem in 2024. Now, for those of you guys and gals that are curious about midnight, I had somebody that I used to talk to quite a bit back in the day who is now a part of um, helping launch Midnight. And he reached out to me in conversation today and uh, he was telling me some things and, and I thought, okay, I mean, a lot of this sounds really promising. Uh, and I was trying to get some details about like the potential uh, elements associated with the airdrop and all of that. He explained what their goal is and what they're expecting, but there's no 100% yet because it hasn't all been finalized. But let's just say it's looking pretty damn good. I mean, if what he's explained, I don't know what, this is the thing. I didn't even ask him, hey, can I talk about this? Um, so I'm not gonna be specific because I don't, everybody knows that I'm not trying to clout chase and I'm not trying to get ahead of anything. Um, you know, people that come to me, especially people uh, that I, I know have, you know, basically let's just say like an element of power um, in the space. I don't wanna take things they say and then immediately run out to the web and like air it, right? Because it's just not my way. People know they can trust me. I'm not here to hurt anybody. I'm not here to like, uh, I'm just not here for that shit, period. That's all. I'm not here to hurt anybody. Um, my thing is, is if I don't like somebody or I think something's bad, I generally just don't say anything at all. Uh, and in this case, it was all pretty favorable, but it's, it's some of it to me was so favorable that I'm like afraid to even put it out in the public yet. I want to let some of this stuff transpire first, but let's just say I'm very glad to be holding Cardano and I think it's going to go very well one way or another. Um, but <clears throat> I also think that some of these things are going to take a little longer than than we might want them to, given where we're at in the current market cycle. But I think leading up to that, it's going to get really, really wild. Uh, so all of that being said, Charles Hoskinson, the co-founder of Cardano, has expressed his optimism about 2024, predicting unprecedented, unprecedented growth for the Cardano ecosystem. Speaking during a YouTube broadcast on Saturday, Hoskinson highlighted the unique and interesting nature of the year so far, emphasizing that 2024 is poised to be a pivotal period for the Cardano blockchain. And I agree. I think Voltaire is going to be insane. Notably, Hoskinson particularly focused on the ongoing transition into the so-called Age of Voltaire. Named after the influential French writer and philosopher Voltaire, marks the fifth and final stage of the Cardano development roadmap, succeeding the Basho scaling phase. In this phase, ADA holders will be able to play an active role in shaping the future decision-making processes of the blockchain. Folks, I'll, I'll tell you right now, I'm writing something that ultimately it's going to take me a while because I've been kind of writing it now for a couple of weeks. Um, but I want it to be the most influential thought, pro thought provoking uh, write up about how we can use decentralized um, technology for, for voting, for democracy um, in a very transparent, clear, fair and balanced way and eliminate all of the hoopla associated with politicians and their he said, she said, all of the political control, the lobbying, all of the bullshit that makes up our system today that is absolutely broken to its core. We need a change. Um, and so I think, quite frankly, I think that the the elements of Voltaire and I think, quite frankly, Midnight 
uh, could play a significant role in empowering uh, governments, countries to to bring a system like this in. And uh, I'm I'm gonna I'm calling what I'm doing the block party, and I already registered the domain forever ago. Uh, but this is something I'm working on, and I'm even I'm even going to have my fr- my liberal friend George go through it all, because it's one of those things that I think needs to be accepted by both sides, and uh, I think everybody needs to be uh, happy with what can be accomplished uh, with a system like this. And so I'm 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 having people that you know I don't even agree with politically. I want them to go through it all and pick it apart and tell me what's good, what's bad, what do you think? And so far, just my expression of the idea, he's all about. He loves it because he even though we're on different sides of the aisle, we still believe that there are a lot of issues with our system today. And so I think it's time to eliminate a lot of that if if at all possible. Hoskinson further outlined Voltaire's key pillars. The first involves democratic consent, emphasizing the need for an on-chain governance system like decentralized software development and the Constitutional Committee. The second pillar highlights institutions like the Cardano Foundation, simplifying blockchain complexity set to be validated by the community by year-end through democratic consent. Finally, the third pillar centers on constitutional representation, safeguarding users' fundamental rights, focusing on principles like a deflationary monetary policy and inclusive accountability. Hoskinson further shared insights from the recently released Electric Capital 2023 Crypto Developer Report showcasing positive trends in Cardano's development. Despite the crypto market facing fluctuations, The report showcased that Cardano has remained productive with a significant number of developers and repositories contributing to the blockchain's growth. Although Hoskinson failed to fully agree with the report's figures, such as the mentioned 170 full-time developers, 490 monthly active developers, 2,796 repositories, and approximately 1 to 3 million commits, he expressed his optimism, stating, they're moving in the right direction and the trend lines are also looking really good. Um, you know, it, there, there's there's just a lot of stuff associated with Cardano, and, and it's just going to keep growing. And I love the general sentiment, and I love the community. As a matter of fact, uh, on Twitter, I posted a link to a new Cardano group that I started. I've got a lot of influencers in there. Um, check my Twitter for a direct link, because it is through link only. It's not open, uh, because I don't want every robot and, and, and troll like popping in there uh, willy-nilly, posting their spam. Um, but it's growing, and it's a cool group, and I, I, I have high, high – I'll, I'll talk more about it with a direct link in the comments. Uh, maybe I'll throw the link to, uh, in the comments below of this video as well. Um, but let's dive into this a little bit. Uh, the headline Cardano community frustrated with the fact that Midnight did not mention network in its most recent thread. Uh, Midnight is being developed as a data protection blockchain aimed at safeguarding sensitive commercial and personal data, thereby protecting fundamental freedoms of association commerce, and expression for various stakeholders, including developers, companies, and individuals. Midnight's architecture is centered on a data-protecting smart contract protocol that enables users to shield sensitive data and metadata, providing transparency where necessary while ensuring privacy. You know, uh, this whole thing is just kind of a, to me, it's a little silly. Uh, But I will say this, one of the things that I was thinking about in terms of what could be a potential use case for Midnight is, I don't know how many of you saw the, uh, there's a Netflix docu-series, I think it's three or four episodes, about a woman who um, was kidnapped in the middle of the night uh, while in bed with her boyfriend and um, b- was kidnapped and and then basically brought back, right? And at first, everybody thought that the boyfriend did something to her and he's just trying to be helpful. He's explaining every detail and everything he said they tried to use against him and they were trying to pin it all on him. Then she shows up out of nowhere, basically saying, I was, you know, I was kidnapped and then they brought me back and this happened and that happened. And then they thought they both colluded to make up this cockamamie story because it sounded so unreal. Come to find out that this guy was like a, for years was doing random things in different parts of California. And the, 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 the police officers in, um, um, I forget what the place was called, but these cops were just 
ridiculous like just i mean and i the whole time we're watching it i just kind of laughed and i'm like you know my wife was like how could these cops do this how could they be that way i'm like california man like it's just a di- i don't know if the air is different too much smog i don't know what it is but people are just different and um sorry i was born in california but um you know i'm glad i got out of there i might be like i don't know might be a totally different person i i don't know um but the whole thing ended up being true and the way they discovered it is because there was a police, uh, a, a, a detective that found they, 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 some other stuff happened. I won't give it all away, but ultimately the, 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 the whole point of me bringing this up is had there been a central database of all of these cases, whether they be proven or unproven with, you know how we have NFT collections, right? And in these NFTs there are all these traits. So we might have an NFT collection that's made up of like 40 different trait possibilities, right? Like uh, black eyeglasses, uh, like whatever, whatever it is, you know, blue shirt, frog, whatever, right? We have all these little keywords that make up the traits associated with this NFT. And I'm thinking, why don't we have a searchable database throughout the country that detectives could plug into and search for elements of their case to find similarities to other cases that exist across the country. Maybe a criminal has a pattern of doing things in this state, but then he leaves that state and he goes to the opposite end of the country to do the, to do the same crimes, but in a different area. But because that the person hasn't been caught yet, they don't necessarily have any way of pinning or connecting this individual to this individual. Or, in it, from what I saw in this docu series, the police don't seem to have a database that they're able to plug into with just the elements. Like one of the key things that was a common denominator in a lot of these crimes that this gentleman uh, perpetrated were these. Uh, duct tape shut goggles, right? Like swimmers goggles that he would put on the victims so that they couldn't see or know where they were. Well, if I were in, you know, Idaho and I'm plugging in, you know, duct tape goggles as a keyword search that's that's relevant to the, the MO of this particular individual and the crimes he's committed, and that brings up details of other unsolved cases in another area, now you've got two departments sharing information on these cases because there's a central database do you see what I'm saying? And I'm like, why don't we have something like that? And what, how could something like Midnight and Cardano play a role in establishing a, a system that all of these details are stored on a blockchain based database that is immutable, that's not necessarily able to just be changed on a whim? You add the case file, the details relevant to the case file, make those searchable, and then you can, you, through midnight, you can protect different elements of data associated with the case or those involved. But basically a system where other departments throughout the country can find uh, cases of similar MOs, details, that sort of thing. And now you're able to share uh, information on helping each other figure out who's done what. I think that would be a fantastic um, uh, use case for something like Midnight, for Cardano, for decentralized technology. Uh, Let me know what you guys think of something like that. Uh, I would really appreciate it. Also, I also want to announce that I am officially a holder of Kulo, okay? I'm a holder of Kulo token. And so I actually hung out with uh, Seth with Mind Your Biz and, um, and, and Ramil, who is actually my opponent for Karate Combat. We hung out a bit uh, over the weekend. And, um, you know, he's telling me about his Kulo project and, and so forth. And, and at first I thought, man, this is silly. But I'll tell you right now, and, and here's the thing. A lot of people, they, they might say, you know, how, how can you hang out with somebody you're going to fight in less than a month? And let me tell you this straight up. I, Ramil and I have absolutely no ill will. We absolutely respect each other. I really like the guy. I really genuinely do like the guy. And and I, and I think he likes me. And I, we know what's ahead of us. But I think to some degree, it makes it a little easier for us to take on the, the, the challenge knowing that neither of us, re- like both of us want to win, but neither of us want to like hurt each other. Like this isn't like a... Um, 
you know, like uh, he's talking massive trash and I think he's a piece of shit. So I'm going to go after him with all guns blazing kind of thing. It's just not like that. I actually really like him. And I, and, and I think the feeling is very much mutual. And he, he, he asked me, he's like, Hey, if you want some of these Kulo tokens, I'm happy to send you some. Um, and he was just explaining the project. I'm like, this is actually fun, man. Sure. So, and and then today we talked and he's like, hey, if you're interested in being a KOL, which is basically like I help promote Kulo token in exchange for tokens or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, for you, I, I, no problem. Like, I'm happy to. And he, I guess he's sending me a bunch of more tokens. I don't know what he's sending me exactly. I guess they're going to be, um, I don't know, vetted or whatever over a few months or whatever. I'm like, dude, it's all good. I don't really care. It's all cool. But the thing of it is, is that I'm like totally down for it. A, because I think the project's hilarious. Um, but B, because I watched this dude grind all night, phone meetings, Twitter spaces, talking with his marketing partner, whatever, like all these different things. He was just always on his phone, always on a call, always just grinding. He was just grinding for this Kulo token. And I thought, this is a big deal for this guy. Like, he, like, legitimately wants this to be a thing. Like, wants this to be something big. And I feel like when you put that kind of energy into something and, and the kind of guy that I've seen that he is, like, listen, we both know that come fight night, and I told him flat out, I'm like, listen, man, I, I don't really care how much I like you. I'm not losing this fight because I like you. And I'm not going to put myself into harm's way or suffer a bunch of damage because I think you're a hell of a guy. The night of the fight, you killed my fucking dog. Like, that's it. Afterwards, I'll find my dog alive and well. But for that, for for the minutes or however long that this fight lasts, I'm I'm basically like gonna treat you like you just killed my dog, and that's all there is to it. And then afterwards, we can go back to being best friends. We can go back. We can go hang out, and we're gonna drink and be merry. But during the fight, like it's game on because it's gonna be seen by millions of people, and I don't think either of us wants to like, you know neither of us wants to take a big L because we, we, we were like too nice. And like, you know, we caught the other slip in that kind of thing. So, you know, and you know what, I don't care, man. I saw, I saw the dude with his shirt off. Like I, I was like, okay, all right, Mr. Moon daddy in your fucking abs. And you're like, he's kind of jacked under there. He tries to play it off. Like he's got man boobs and shit. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. Dude's built. He's built. Now he is a lot smaller than me though. I mean, I think he said he weighs uh, like 220 right now and I'm at 265. So I'm definitely a sizably bigger person than him. Um, you know, and the last guy I fought was 254 when I fought him. But I also fought him at 285, so he gave up some weight. But he tried to do stuff with me in that fight that he just couldn't do because I was just so much bigger. Um, and uh, but you know, don't 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 get it twisted. Like just because he and I are cool and we're very cordial and we can like we're not kids. And I, I know guys that have been friends for years, man, training partners for years. And when it comes to fight night, you got to fight each other. You put it all on the line the night of, and then you move on, you know, as usual when it's all said and done. And so that's basically the way I'm treating this. I think that's the way he's treating it. And um, it is nice to know that nothing is with like malice. Like we're not going at this with malice. It's just competitive. It's a competitive event and that's it. Um, and, um, you know, I, I know that like I'm very confident in my hands <laughs> um you know I, I've I've finished a fight in 35 seconds already with my hands um and I'm also very 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 confident in my feet if I kick him it's game over if I land anything clean something tells me that his 220 pound frame is going to absorb it in a way that shuts him down if I hit him clean I think it's lights out but the counter to that is everybody has a puncher's chance and I have training experience. He does not. He is going to be in better shape than I am. So, you know, that is a concern for me because while I might destroy what I hit, um, he's going to be quicker and he's going to have better cardio, I'm sure. And so he might have a completely different strategy. He might just run circles around me for the first four minutes and then come in and try to capitalize at the end. I don't know what his game plan is going to be. Apparently he's going to Brazil for three weeks to go train. And I'm like, all right, man, bring it, you know, let's run it. Let's do it. Um, but you know, we'll see how it all plays out. But I think one way or another, it's going to be exciting. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I've been, I've been training probably not as much 
much as I should, especially after meeting him in person and seeing a dude with his shirt off, knowing how he looks under these these big baggy clothes. Um, he's a sleeper. He's a sleeper. But I have a, a new motivation, I think, for me to just keep getting into better and better shape, continue building my cardio, keep my technique high, because I think if anything, my technique is going to win this. Um, it's definitely not going to be my cardio, but my technique is what I think is going to finish this fight for me. And so that's it. That's I'm just going to leave it at that. And what, what plays out plays out. I know we just got a new requirement to do a, um, Oh, we have to do some more training videos with some dialogue and things explaining everything. So you might see another video pop up where I'm explaining some of this stuff again. Uh, but yeah, man, I'm excited. February 23rd, Karate Combat. I'm in it. We're like, we're we're definitely we're gonna go for it, and make the best of it. And uh, but yeah, I I am involved now in this Kulo token. I just think it's hilarious, personally. I think it's great, and the group uh, on Telegram really likes it a lot too. So. Make sure you check out the comments uh, in the description below uh, for some links. I want all of you Cardano lovers. I want you in my, this new Telegram group because I've got some other stuff coming. And um, I'm building a small team around a new website project that I'm building uh, where I, I want the goal to be kind of like um, like Andrew Tate's kind of war room, but a little more legit. And not not charging everybody five grand for a seat and then ignoring you on Telegram or whatever the hell they do. I like I've seen these videos where people tried to join it and it just ends up kind of a shit show. Um, I really want to kind of start this group where it's like serious people who really want to learn more about crypto. I want it to be solid for newcomers, and I want to I'm establishing a, a kind of a research team and a content team so that we're constantly putting out stuff uh, in the within the membership of the site to help people really grow in their crypto venture. Uh, and so we'll we'll see how that comes about too. But um, a lot of it's obviously going to be based around Cardano and and as well as other projects. I'm not going to uh, neglect other crypto projects or blockchains just because I'm a big Cardano bull. I don't think that's fair to people. Um, you know, obviously everybody knows where I stand on Cardano. Like it's, it's like a running joke. I, I saw a joke with Superman. Like I married Cardano and he's right. I did. I married Cardano in 2017 and I'm, I'm a loyal son of a bitch. So, um, but that, that's not to say that I don't still appreciate the value of other blockchains and what I think they're accomplishing as well. So we're going to start diving into some of that. Um, and uh, I'm going to enlist some help. So, Listen, that's it for today. It's Monday. I've got so much stuff to do. I've, I've got a lot of stuff to do with the Crow Trader. I'm experimenting with AI strategies. Hopefully, you guys are looking at it for your own. And um, yeah, until next time, guys, Crow Your Coins. I hope you had some fun with me today, and I'll see you soon.